students welcome to analyst is i am ekta sharma once again here to discuss with you various prelims related questions that are given in analyst weekly now this is our analyst weekly a weekly newspaper where towards the end on the seventh page we provide you with prelims related questions and the answers and discussions are given during these videos that we make for you to understand the answers to understand the solutions of these questions for the first analyst week i have already made a video that you can find on our youtube channel now without any further ado let's just start a discussion on analyst weekly prelims related questions now this video is analyst weekly part 2 that is we are going to discuss the questions that were given in analyst weekly part 2 let's move to our first question The first question is with reference to sexual harassment of women at workplace act 2013 consider the following statements now this is a very important act that came after vishaka guidelines this you might have heard and read about in various arenas in social polity so on and so forth so this is not a very difficult question very straight forward questions let's look at the statements the very first statement is every employer is required to constitute an internal complaints committee icc at each office or branch with 15 or more employees the second statement says complaints committees have the powers of civil court the third statement says that the complaints committee are required to provide for conciliation before initiating an inquiry if requested by the complainant now in such cases in such issues where we try to understand an act you need to understand or go through various features of such act because these features become very essential from where the statement based questions or the statements are taken in such questions now let's get back to this question which of this these statements given above is or are correct so which of these statements is or are correct again in the first video we have already discussed the significance of these words that is correct or incorrect sometimes unknowingly without reading the whole statement we tend to may mark correct answer instead of incorrect and sometimes we tend to mark incorrect answer instead of correct because we just don't read it properly so so what are the various options given one and two only one and three only two and three only one two and three let's see what the answer is the answer is solution c that is two and three statements are correct so that means that yes these committees they do have the power of civil court and thirdly yes these committees are required to provide for a conciliation before initiating an inquiry if requested by the complainant what is the first statement that is wrong this statement that is every employer is required to constitute an internal committee complaints committee with uh at each office or branch with 15 employees now here the wrong part is this 15 instead of 15 there are 10 employees so wherever there are 10 employees at certain branch or uh, you know uh, office of a particular office employer is supposed to provide for a complaints committee now moving on to the next question which of the following non arctic countries have observer status under the arctic council now you must have read about the arctic council in uh, this recent uh, india's arctic policy so india recently has come up with india's arctic policy finally after has become an important arena not just in international relations but also in terms of environment political uh, situation so on and so forth so increasing importance increasing importance of arctic has led 
India to come up with an Arctic policy. Now, because this thing has been in news, this question can be asked, which is a very factual question, a direct question. You need to know about the Arctic Council. Now, what is Arctic Council? Arctic Council basically deals with the governance of all the countries uh, that are there in the Arctic and it deals with the problems, the issues, so on and so forth of the indigenous people that reside in the Arctic. So Arctic in itself is a very wide area. There are various countries that they form a part of this Arctic Council that are there, that are present in the Arctic area of the uh, globe. Right. So moving on. Let's see what are the options. The first one is Germany. Second one is Denmark, India, China, Switzerland. Now, among all these options, you have to write the correct answer. So, which of these countries are or they have a, an observer status under Arctic Council? These are the various options. Take your time, pause for one minute and then come back and answer. In the meanwhile, let's see what the solution is. Solution is B, that is Denmark. Now, all other countries, they have observer status, but Denmark is the permanent member, permanent member of Arctic Council, right? Denmark does not have an observer status, but it is a permanent member of Arctic Council. Moving on, so this is this is the uh, map of the globe from the top from the North Pole. So this is the North Pole here, and all the countries around it, they are uh, given here. So all the countries that are colored blue, they are the members. The dark blue countries are the members. The light blue countries, including the Baltic states and various other countries in Europe, here they have observer status, and others, including India here. China, they have ad hoc observer status or pursuing observer status. Now moving on and also you need to remember one thing in this regard and that is that this observer status is renewed every second year. So since 2013, India has maintained its uh, observer status and the status has been renewed uh, eventually. Moving on, the third question, consider the following statements. Gig economy. Gig economy has also been in news lately. Why it has been in news, you can refer to our analyst weekly. You can uh, look for the news and various aspects related to gig economy in our analyst weekly. Meanwhile, we can see the question. Gig economy companies create more than 50% of the new employment generated across both blue collar and white collar workforce. Second statement is the global gig economy index report has ranked India among the top 10 countries. Now the question is which of the above statements is or are correct? We have to mark the correct statement. Now in this regard you need to understand what is gig economy. What do you think is gig economy? It's a very simple term. And in fact, uh, especially in the um, post-pandemic era, I won't call it post-pandemic though, but yeah, uh, after this uh, huge pandemic situation, this gig economy has been uh, very overpowering. It has uh, somehow made its uh, importance, its significance in the its place in the overall economy of almost all the nations. Now, what is this economy? So, gig economy basically, it refers to uh, the employments that are generated where an employee does not need to stick to one particular place or need to sit in one particular place, work there, so on and so forth. So basically, there's a lot of mobility in gig economy. For example, the freelancing work for content developers. That is a big example of gig economy. You can sit at your home, work for your content. You can develop content, send the content to your employer and you are going to get paid. You don't need to go to the office, sit in the office for a certain amount of time, so on and so forth. There are various pros and cons related to this gig economy. In fact, IT sector, 
has also gradually grown uh, its significance in the arenas of gig economy why you can see that lately even the it professionals they also perform it uh, or they also have been given work from home right so they can sit at their home in their comfy chairs and can work for their company and can be paid uh, as much as they were being paid uh, when they were going to the offices so you need to read a little more about gig economy because currently this is a hot topic now without delaying it further let us discuss the question so what is the right answer which of these two statements is right the answer is c that is both one and two statements are correct lately india has uh, you know it has come under uh, top 10 countries where the gig economy according to this gig economy index uh, india has been ranked among the top 10 countries whose uh, uh, you know economy in whose economy the gig economy has made its presence felt also the first statement that is gig economy countries create more than 50 percent of the new employment generated is also true so this is approximately somewhere around 58 percent right so the answer is c both the statements are correct moving on to the next question that is smile now this is a scheme based question again a scheme based question a scheme that has recently been launched direct questions are being asked from there so what is this smile support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprise was launched by the ministry of social justice and empowerment this is the first statement then the second statement says it is a central sector scheme this is a very important a uh, word uh, rather the key word in here so it is a central sector scheme designed to provide welfare measures to the transgender community and the people engaged in the act of begging now which of these two statements is or are incorrect the answer to this is solution d that is neither one nor two that means that both these statements are correct that is it was launched by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. It is a scheme for uh, both transgender community as well as the one who, for the people who are begging. Right. So it basically this scheme provides legal protection and social security for these people this is a very important scheme because finally these two communities which are out there which face uh, the brunt of changes in society are finally being recognized they are finally being acknowledged by the government and they are you know getting various uh, kinds of protections moving on to the next question consider the following statements with reference to united nations world water development report 2022 so this report was recently launched by united nation and the statements are china is the largest groundwater user globally followed by india and pakistan the second statement says that india uses 89 percent of total groundwater abstracted per year for agriculture which is the highest in the world now you need to understand you need to mark the correct statements of these two these are the various options again take your time read the statements try to answer them in the meanwhile let's talk about the solution so the solution is b that is only two which is the correct statement only the second statement is correct here the first statement that says that china is the largest groundwater user is wrong then who is the largest groundwater user it is surprisingly india india is then followed by china and pakistan so these are the top three countries that uh, are the largest groundwater users globally in fact the second statement is shocking enough it should work as a fodder for your mains answer writing too 
what is that that is 89% of the total ground water extracted per year is just for agricultural use 22% of water in india uh, or sorry globally is used for personal or household purposes and 9% is used for industry so this is the overall uh, stratification you need to understand that see you can see how 89% like a huge chunk of water the ground water that is like the most portable form of water is used in agricultural purposes right now moving on to the next question the sixth question that talks about Jukasu technology. Again, this technology has been in news lately. You need to read our uh, weekly newspaper, The Analyst Weekly, for better understanding of this. Like for now, Jukasu technology, what is it? It is related to which of the following? Now, these are four options. Very direct question. All you need to tell, all you need to know is what this technology is all about now let's see the answer it is solution a that is it is a wastewater treatment jokasu itself the word it is a japanese technology and it is a japanese technology and the word itself the word itself means uh, purity tank right now this technology is very essential for India. Why? Because in India we see that there is a lot of wastage of water. After water resources, after the water use index, we, why we are directly talking about Jukasu? Because Jukasu can be used as if you get a question in mains in regards to the wastage of water. In solutions, this Jukasu technology can play an important role. Why? Because it basically talks about water treatment or making it reusable locally itself. So, if you are using water, if there is a wastage of water, you can use Jukasu technology. You can go through the Jukasu, the overall technology, how it makes the water reusable. Now, moving on to the next question. See, this uh, Jokasu technology can be local for a particular region, for a particular community, as well as for households. So, the next question is, consider the following statements about vultures. Now, about vultures, vultures have already uh, been discussed and a question related to vulture has already been asked in prelims examinations in 2014 or 15. But vultures, they still remain very uh, relevant to UPSC because vultures are very essential markers of environment, of a healthy environment. Now, let's see what are the statements. Vultures have an extremely corrosive stomach acid that allows them to consume rotting animal corpses. The second statement, the government has banned veterinary use of diclofenac drug. Now, this drug is very well known and it is used as a pain reliever both in humans as well as in animals. So, this drug because it is toxic to the vultures even in small doses causing kidney failure. Vultures help in identifying illegal poaching of elephants and rhinoceros. So, these are the three statements. Go through the statements and see which of these statements is or are correct. Right? So the answer to this is, the solution to this is solution D. That is, all 1, 2, 3 statements are correct. You need to see, you need to understand. See, diclofenac is usually used by uh, people who have kettles. So they use this uh, drug to relieve their kettles of pain, right, since it's a painkiller. So, they use this drug in their cattles. When these cattles die, these uh, vultures, they tend to eat their dead bodies. Now, in that case, this drug is transferred from these cattles to the vultures and this drug causes kidney failure in vultures. Also, 
yes this statement is true because extremely corrosive stomach acid is found in vultures because they eat corpses the dead animals dead animals have multiple infections they have lots and lots of infections in them including rabies so if they don't have this kind of highly active stomach acid they also will fall prey to such infections and will die so that is why they have this highly active stomach acids now this uh, statement is a little confusing might not you might not have read about this as much but believe me these are very important vultures are important in identifying illegal poaching because elephants and rhinoceros the rhinos poachers what they do is elef they kill rhinos and elephants they take their tusks and they leave the dead body so when there are a lot many vultures in that area in a particular area the uh, the forest department gets to know that there is something fishy especially in this case that there is there might be a dead body of an animal right so in this case if there is a dead animal that is elephants left by the poachers then the forest department gets to know that okay some poaching has uh, occurred in our area and that is why so many vultures are there so this is how they indicate illegal poaching moving on to the next question which of the following statements is correct with respect to union territory of ladakh now very recently ladakh has become our union territory so that is why this question has been and it will remain in in importance or in news at least for coming 2 to 3 years right let's see the statements ladakh translates as the land of high passes with karakoram pass to the north demchok to the west and zojala to the south the second statement is the 17 point agreement was signed between india and china in 1951 now out of these two statements you have to mark the correct option that is which of the two statements or either uh, the two statements are correct or not these are the various options given let's see what the answer is the answer is d that is neither one or the two the either of the two, uh, two statements is not correct why let's see because this is right that ladakh translates as land of high passes but Karakoram Pass to its north is right, but Demchok to the west and Zojala to the south is wrong. Demchok is to the south, and Zojala is towards the west of Ladakh. So this is the problem with the first statement, and in the second statement, this seventeen-point agreement was not signed between India and China, but this agreement was signed between China. antibet okay so this agreement was signed between china and tibet moving on to the next question and that is consider the following pairs this is in, especially in terms of art and culture such questions are very frequent look at the two matches look at the table try to understand which of the two uh, three matches is correct so here in the first column festival is given and in the second one state is given and you have to uh, see which of the above pairs is correctly matched so which of the three pairs is correctly matched see the answer let's first just see the answer and then discuss so the answer is solution c that is both 1 and 2 are correctly matched these two options are correctly matched which is the wrongly matched answer uh, option that is Lusong and Meghalaya. And what is the answer to this? See, Lusong is a an annual festival in Sikkim, right? It is Lusong is a Sikkimese New Year festival and a carnival which celebrates the end of annual harvest season at the conclusion of tenth month of Tibetan lunar calendar. The festival is primarily celebrated by two important tribes that is Bhutia and Lepcha tribe in India Bhutan and Nepal So this is the answer to it 
Now let's see the next question and that is Culado National Park is a natural Ramsar wetland site. So there are few statements related to Culado National Park. It is a very, uh, you know, outright question. There is no analysis required here. It is a very factual question directly from environment. The second statement says it is also known as Ghana National Park, which means that uh, it is a dense forest, which means a dense forest. Thirdly, it is the only wintering ground for the central population of rare and highly endangered Siberian crane in India. So, out of all these three statements, which statement is or are not correct? The answer to this is solution A, that is the first statement. Only the first statement is not correct. So, rest two of these statements are correct. But the first statement that says that Culado National Park is a natural Ramsar wetland site. Now, what is the problem with this statement? See, Culado National Park is not a natural Ramsar site. It is an artificial or man-made site. So, this is all about the prelims related questions given in Analyst Weekly. I hope the answers are clearer to you now. I hope you do understand the, uh, the various uh, topics that we discussed during this discussion better now. Hope the discussion was helpful to you. Thank you so much. Keep studying. Take care.